Many of the fields across Oklahoma that are going dual purpose are looking like this one right here. Brian, what should producers be thinking about whenever they're actually planting their seeds? Yeah, so right now is the time to make sure we have a good seed soil contact when we're, we're thinking about planting. I also got to be thinking about fertility, you know, with everything that's going on, we need that crop to have a good start, a good base to get going. Even if you haven't fertilized that grazing wheat yet, we need to get fertility down pretty soon so that it has enough to make that forage for that grazing. We like to put down at least 60 pounds of nitrogen for each ton of forage that we expect to produce. Now that's with soil test nitrogen, so we take our yield goal times 60 minus soil test. So one or two ton goal plus that six times that 60 pounds and subtract the soil test. But I also like to put down some starter fertilizer. So typically with our wheat, that's a dry fertilizer in the form of 1846-0. That's 18% nitrogen, 46% phosphorus, and 0% potassium. That's DAP or MAP, which is 1152-0. I like that not because of the nitrogen. We have a lot of people that want to think about nitrogen in furrow. And while you can, I don't see much benefit of that. I want the phosphorus in furrow. It's that middle number, the 18 or 52, that phosphorus that does us two and three fold. One, having phosphorus banded is a more efficient way to apply it. It puts it in a concentrated zone that doesn't get tied up by the soil cations of calcium and aluminum and iron. It also helps us alleviate some of our pH issues that we'll see across the fields. So even if your field composite pH is a 5.5 or 5.6, which is pretty good for most of our wheat ground, there's going to be areas that are acidic. Having that banded phosphorus really alleviates the aluminum toxicity that comes from low pH. So I want to see if we have good soil test phosphorus, I want to see 40 to 50 pounds of product that's DAP or MAP in furrow, helping us get a good start, getting those roots going and, and alleviating any aluminum. If we have low soil test phosphorus, then we add that on top of that, that starter rate, especially in our lower pHs. That gets us a good start, good stand establishment, and having that nitrogen 60 pounds per ton in the ground ready to go is what we need to get us for that forage coming into the fall. Let's talk about uh, application moving forward because that's, that's getting the seed in the ground and, and, and slight emergence there. What, what, what should producers be thinking about, say, a couple weeks from now, a couple months from now? So we need to keep an eye on it. One, if you've got the nitrogen on, then it's just keep an eye on it, making sure that it's growing, growing well, looking for pests. We always have army cutworms come through, so keep an eye on your insects and such. If you don't have your nitrogen on, and you're worried about getting it on, it's okay. We can, that crop, especially have some starter, that crop can go for a while without any significant loss of production. So get the wheat in the ground and get it up. Stand established is more important now. And then come back after that wheat's up and add some nitrogen, whether it's urea or UAN, let the weather's cool and make sure that application is right. And we also have in the next couple of weeks planning for our grain only that will be going in in October. I remember a few years ago you explained to me what the N, the P, and the K do to the plant. Yeah. So, so the phosphorus actually helps with the root growth. Talk about the other, uh, the N and the K in there also. So phosphorus is helping with root growth. It's actually kind of the energy source for, for the plant. Nitrogen is a critical component. It's building the building block of amino acids, of proteins, and we need it for chlorophyll. So it really helps with biomass and production and chlorophyll. And our potassium is really our regulator. It has a lot of functions, but when it comes to Oklahoma, a big function is water control. It controls the stomatal opening and closing. So we need good potassium management to make sure that when we go dry, it manages, that the, the crop can manage through it, which is why we need that pre-plant soil test to know where we sit at. Whether it's a composite, a zone, or a grid, that gives us a starting point for NPK and pH that we can't just get from anything else. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, county educators are able to help out with that. Absolutely. Go to your county educators. Go talk to them. Help get a soil sample. They can send it at Oklahoma State University, the soil testing lab down there, and get the recommendations that you need. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Brian Arnell, soil nutrition specialist here at Oklahoma State University.